The MI Golf Podcast with Paul Kelly and Morris J. It certainly is. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be listening to the MI Golf Podcast episode. 57, MJ. 57. And on the pod this evening? Yeah, after a solid season on the Challenge Tour, Michael Hoy's joined us for a really interesting chat. We've had our usual roundup of the amateur and the professional games. And question, will Rory McIlroy really turn his back on the European Tour? He's doing an early Brexit. Seems to be. He's getting out of <laughs> Europe early. At least he's making a decision. <laughs> Get the best prices on every round of golf with Hot Deals Tea Times exclusively from Golf Now. Available at more than 1,600 golf clubs throughout the UK and Ireland. Hot deals save you up to 80% on thousands of tea times daily. Find the flame and save every time you play with hot deals, only from Golf Now. On with the pro news, Mr Kelly. Right, let's start with Rory. So Rory, end of season press conference, he's sitting in Dubai, talking away as he does, chatting away, answering all the questions. Very honestly, usually. Uh Uh-huh. And being Rory, he answers a couple of questions, probably honestly, too honestly, and Twitter in the world goes absolutely nuts. So in no particular order, here's a couple of things that he talked about that has the, the golf world in uproar. Point number one, possibly giving up his Euro Tour membership for next year. Doing an early Brexit. Some query about possibly missing the Irish Open as a result. Why, why do you say that now? He was asked a question about how many European Tour events that he had on his schedule Mm -hmm. and he said quite categorically he had won the Omega one on a schedule and possibly won over the Scottish or the Irish Open right because I I read something I heard somebody said about doing the Scottish yeah well you see he also mentioned then that his plan was to try and play in the week before a major and obviously the Scottish Open is before the Open Championship, yes. which is Royal Port Roach this year. Yes. Is it really? It's next year. I keep saying this year. I don't know why. Because it is. Next year. It's, it's kind of this year. Wrap around. Right, we're nearly there. <laughs> Close enough. Uh-huh. So um, so he said that, and that obviously has caused a lot of conjecture. So let, let's go back a wee bit, and let's start with the whole European Tour membership thing. Um, because of the way that the, the tours are working out this next year, um, with the US Tour finishing in August and sort of the European Tour having moved a lot of their big events to the mm-hmm. end of the year. And the PGA to, shifting and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then BMW PGA. Wentworth as well, yeah, yeah. Um, it looks like Roy's decided that he's going to start his season in America in January and more or less base himself in January through to the Open Championship. In Florida. Uh, yeah, yeah. In the sun. Uh, with his wife. With his wife. Where he settled. And a nice, and a nice new house. Yeah. yeah. Why would you not? And he's prepared to give up. <laughs> At the minute, he's prepared not to play the requisite number of events, which would be, like, it's an extra four or five events on top of all the majors and on top of the WGC. Now, from Roy's point of view, that it's not the first time, by the way, he's talked about doing that and basing himself in America. He's yeah, mentioned yeah. it before. But there was a new rule brought in by the European Tour, which was, if you give up your membership you cannot be a vice captain of the Ryder Cup team or a captain so I don't know whether Roy was aware of that but he was asked about it in the press he was asked he was at, no he was asked about it after his first round right, okay, of right, Dubai okay, okay. to which his answer was it's at least 20 years away Yes. So Rory's kind of thinking, the point being, I'm not really things are probably going to change in the next twenty years. <laughs> things might change. <laughs> yes. So that's where we are with the whole thing, MJ. I don't know. You know, he does live in America. Does he owe the European Tour anything? No, I mean, you know, the, he's a he, contractor. He, he's a contractor. He's a, he's their biggest star, arguably. You know, he's they need him. Yeah. Um, it's you know, he's doing what he wants to do and what he has to do, and he has a life as well, and he has, you know, the wife and the house, and he lives mostly over there, and so uh, yeah, it's, I mean, and you know what I mean? It's okay, it's big news. It's big news yeah. for golf nerds. Yeah, yeah, but it's Rory doing what he has to do. Yeah, he talked about it in the press conference about needing to do what he what he, he had to play against better fields to try and get back up the world rankings and also to get back to being the best he could be some debate about that but I guess that was his explanation for it mm-hmm. the thing about the driver was very strange I didn't hear I didn't see this or hear this yeah. he basically got an, he, he basically decided he's been struggling off the tee this year a bit yes. with a both way miss 
uh, and particularly the one that really seems to be annoying him is the one that he loses. Slightly blocked right. To the right. Yeah. So he went to talk to Taylor Maid's top man, which is Adrian, who we met many we did, years yeah, ago did, over yeah. here at, uh, at Darren Clark Golf School, uh-huh. where he did a wee session with him. And they tried to work out what was going on because in Rory as Rory said in the press conference I can hit my three wood I can hit my five wood mm-hmm. my they're all behaving on, themselves all, and this one club seems to be causing a problem just like the rest of us driver off the tee <laughs> driver off the tee so Rory seemed to think so he changed he made a significant change I think he made it lighter and changed the shaft changed right. the swing weight and all of it um, but the question that a lot of people were asking him is why have you waited so long if this has been a problem because he intimated in the press conference that it has been going on for most of the year I guess when well, you know at, at, at the end of the day you're, you're trying to look for something you know if, if, if you're not able to correct it yourself and you're hitting the other clubs you know and after it maybe takes this long to go actually everything else has seemed to be clicking okay yeah it's just this I'm, I'm blocking these out to the right and then I'm you know two way misses yeah of. I don't know. A lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but one of the, I give, give, give the journalists some credit in the press conference are sort of asking, is this not a swing issue? Not a, not an equipment issue, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and he tried to talk around it, basically saying, well, you know, it, the other clubs are all working, uh-huh. so it's clearly not a swing issue. But is it a confidence thing? Is it the same as just changing your putter? And what does he do next year if Taylor made decide to bring out another new driver? Uh-huh. Is he bound by his contract to play the new driver? Quite possibly, quite possibly. So we'll have to stick. Yeah. Now, you see, I can't work this out, Marsh, because we're looking at the likes of Brooks Kapka and Patrick Reid and these boys who are ditching equipment and their equipment contracts and they're playing what suits them, what they enjoy the most. And there's no need to have an equipment contract. If you're winning at that top level, you're winning enough money. Yeah, you can buy your own clubs. You, buy, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. You can win. Your, there's you no get a good need. deal from Andrew Morris. You're getting a big deal from Nike. Why tie yourself to Taylor Maid? I really do wonder about, at the very highest level, why you would risk mm-hmm. um your ability to play as well as you can by not having the right clubs by not having the right equipment is this, is this then why <coughs> Justin Rose is throwing the head up and left tailor me because Roy's getting all the attention from the main man and well, Justin wonder. feels a bit knows how to join I wonder he didn't walk the course for me I'll he didn't check my swing rates <laughs> I just wonder if if somewhere along the line tailor made are deciding maybe half and two because a lot of these deals are, are, are single year some of them run out multi year are, the, are they all turn around at the end of the year and saying well I can get offered a better deal somewhere and is Justin Rose who by the way also skipped Dubai this week has decided that he's away supposedly testing clubs uh-huh. you know so he's not really supporting the tour in their season ending anyway what happens on the what happens on the European tour after the Masters what's is there anything sort of after the Masters that well, traditionally in the old, and under the old sort of April time April time you know, the Players Championship was in March I remember yeah. and then the, they moved it around as well so there's usually is a week quiet period then after remember a couple of small events and then it kicks off again April May with used to be uh, Wentworth was in May yeah and they've moved that now they've moved that September. September Yeah. so that's probably why he doesn't want to you know do all the travel backwards and forwards as well yeah. I just want wonder, Morris, is he getting himself tied up in a question he didn't have to answer? Being? Well, he was being his usual honest self. And we've talked about this before. Would he be not but if you that? put yourself in a presser and, you, and you're Rory McIlroy and you put yourself in a presser. Yeah, but you don't have to be as on- You could say, I'm just looking at my schedule at the minute. That's true. I haven't really decided yet. I haven't really decided yet. I can, and he doesn't have to decide formally until later in the year. So what's the, what's the agenda? What's the agenda? What's, what's he, why, Are you a conspiracy why theorist? Why is he putting it out there? Are you a conspiracy <coughs> theorist, Morris? Yeah. Uh, not overly. The only, uh, uh, um, the finally on the Rory thing, which is, just shows you how much he still moves a needle. Uh-huh. The Irish Open. Now, if Rory wasn't to play in the Irish Open, the Irish Open as an event would be in severe, severe dips. Really. Do you think? Oh, Morris, listen, he is the draw. I know, he's, I know he's. I know he's a he huge is draw. Starnia. I know he's a huge draw. But if you listen to others and other pundits and, uh, and other podcasts, how dare <laughs> spit wash your mouth out? However, there's not maybe as much love in the south as you might think there is for Rory. That's just a, a feeling I'm getting from reading some things, and and it's yeah. I think it's totally unjustified. Yeah, but I don't think they. You know, have taken them to the hearts the way we do. Yeah, you know? possibly. But if you're 
it's obviously in Dubai duty free who are still on board he was their man and he was the boy that he got between him and Dubai duty free it was them who drove the Irish Open to be in the success it is it was a partnership between the two of them you know if Rory decides he'd rather play in the Scottish Open instead of the Irish Open where does that leave? Right, to buy, to buy a duty free, you can't, you know, I can't say, Rory, you have to, ha- you have to play. No, they can't. And they've signed up for, what, is another two, maybe even yeah. four years? Or but, so. like, all, as we know more, sponsorships can be very easily cancelled if things <laughs> don't go well. In terms of the event itself, and where it has got to, and where Rory has taken it to, for Rory not to be playing on it would immediately drop the world ranking points straight off the top. You know, you're, you're going to lose him, so you're going to lose his ranking points. And when Rory plays, Rory tends to get two or three to play with him because of the ranking. But presumably points. it'll still be a Rolex event. Presumably it'll still have that kind of prize money. Presumably, presumably it, it should still be a big draw for those reasons as well. And yeah. it's the Irish But Open. it's not because, as we've seen, the yeah, Rolex the series hasn't been working. This year, yeah. Hasn't been working. Yeah. And without your star names, what happens? It is, of all the things that were talked about, if Rory, if Rory loses, misses out the Irish Open, the Irish Open will be in severe deficit. But he's only, Italian. he's only, and it's you know, it's all conjecture at this yeah. stage. But it's only potentially one year because there's Ryder Cup next yeah. in 2020, 20, and, he and he'll need to back yeah. it for that. So and he it, may just miss, if it, if he misses any, it may just be the hinge. Yeah, and it could well be. And he said he would play it anyway. In so terms of his European tour card, all he has to do is play a couple of events at the end of the year anyway, and he'll have made it up. So that might be null and void. Mm-hmm. It could be that he started a bit of a tizzy about things when he hadn't really thought it through. He was just being just a talking. 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 <laughs> talking. And, and he's given us five minutes. It's brilliant. Uh, scoring on day one in Dubai has been pretty good. Rory opened with a three under 69. Laurie carded 70 and Dunners a level par 72. Uh, the lead is six under. Has Dunners sorted out his wee bad temper yet? <laughs> There was, was a couple of wee clips of Dunners, uh-huh. let's just say, castigating himself, uh-huh. public, very publicly. And, and, and apologising afterwards. Yeah, it was so. great to see you. And it looks as though Francesco, who opened with a 4 under 68, will be crowned the race to Dubai champion. It's early days now. It was only day one no, here. We're still, recording on Thursday night. So. He, still needs to, he, still, he still looks well fit for it. Fleetwood needs to win and hope Molinari finishes outside the top five to pip him to the title. Are we going to play that wee bit of audio from uh, yeah. Molinari, see what he yeah, thinks of his chances? Okay, do accomplished already a lot of my goals and probably even even more than that. And, uh, you know, to come here to, to Dubai with a chance, a good chance of, of winning the, the race to Dubai is uh, incredible. Uh, you know, you, you can kind of set goals on winning tournaments, I think, and... Uh, uh, but you know the race to Dubai obviously is a season-long race, and and with the amount of talent there is on the European Tour, uh, it's really incredible for me to to think I'm I'm on top right now, and uh, I have a chance of coming on top at the at the end of it. Sounds like he's sitting on top of a washing machine doing that interview. So we apologise <laughs> for the audio quality. It's not us. It's it's the amateurs. Uh, to be honest with you, you can't argue if he was. Call for the year, you just pull your hands up oh, and say deserve. Jeepers. What a year he's had. What a year. Fantastic. Over in the PGA Tour, uh, starting today, I think, it's the RSM Classic at Sea Island. Seamus Parr, Parry Carrington, and Graham McDowell are all playing. But Matt Kutcher, the winner at the Mayo Kobe Classic, he's not in action. He's down in Australia playing. Australia. The 2018 LPGA season comes to a close this week with the CME Group Tour Championship in Naples in Florida. Uh, world number one, Jatana Grant, leads the field of 72 players with 12 women vying for the one million dollar bonus that goes to the winner of the race to the cme globe not quite the same ring to it that one uh from next year the event purse will double from 2.5 million dollars to 5 million dollars an elite field of just 60 players at the sme or cme tour uh, championship will have an opportunity to take home the largest first prize in all of women's golf the 1.5 million now that's a tempting prospect for our own stephanie meadow yeah, she's going to get back on the lpga it's interesting, like they're talking about a first prize of 1.5 million, and I think next year's FedEx Cup bonus 
is was, ten point five something, <laughs> something, something ridiculous. Here, what have you done on Steph? By the way, why is she why is she not uh, coming on the pro podcast? She's very very busy. I'm sure she'll cold. come on. Uh, she, she wasn't too well when I was talking to her, and she will come on. I'm sure when she's organised her schedule, she said she'd come on and have a chat with. Us. So it's, you know, she's trying to get herself sorted out again after a long season. So well done. <laughs> the LET is a tournament this week. Uh, no, sorry, that's not this week. Next week, that's the Andalusia. Uh, Costa del Sol opened to Spanio which will be played at La Quinta in Malaga uh, the British Open champ Georgia Hall will highlight, headline the field she's set to become the youngest ever player to win two European Tour Order Mar titles she's just 22 uh, and she'll be younger than your mate Dame Laura Davis which she claimed her second consecutive title in, in 1986 <laughs> <laughs> my goodness here any more word on speaking of LET any more word on uh, the NI Open? Open no and I was making a Funny enough, I was making a few inquiries uh, over the last couple of days, and I don't think there's going to be anything official until possibly after Christmas now. Well, fair enough. Uh, but near to home, Knox Ricky Whitford won his third PGA Ulster Alliance outing at Art Glass recently. Whitford's 41 points gave him victory over Art Glass assistant Adam Mulhall. And indeed, Morris, I was at that event. I played. Can I just say that my team finished dead last? Is this the same team that played in your... No, no, okay. no, this was me with our pro and a couple of members. Art Glass, of course, Morris, are still making changes. They Every time you go up there, they're digging another bunker. Absolutely. I it's amazing. Know it's on. starting to look totally amazing. It's just a totally different golf course. And every time you go up, they've stuck something in that you're just thinking, how am I going to get over that? <laughs> Anyway, you were up there, but during the year, because our great friend Rich Beam was up there. Yes, Rich Beam was there earlier in the year. He was over to, it was actually just before the uh, the Irish Open, and he was there to open uh, the new practice range. Oh, just stunning. And he's an honorary member there, mm-hmm. and loves the place to bits, and I managed it. Now, it's, it's, it's taken us sort of five months to... <laughs> dig out the audio. <laughs> dig out the audio. It all kind of went tits up technically at the time. <laughs> but we managed to rescue it, more or less, and I've cut off the bits about his predictions of the Ryder Cup, which he was wrong about. <laughs> <laughs> and the Irish Open. So, uh, and this is what he had to say basically about Sky and about Art Glass. Sitting on the first tee at Art Glass as Mr. Rich Beam takes a photograph of the astounding view out over the water. How did uh, the love affair with Art Glass come about? How did, how did you strike up a relationship with Paul? Um, he just sent out a, a Twitter, a tweet to me. And we were working at Royal County Down. He says it's only 20 minutes away. So I said, sure, love to come play. Brought my sticks over. And I knew I wanted to play when I was over here. And just, I literally had no idea where I was going to go. And then all of a sudden, a tweet went out. And I, I think maybe I sent out looking for a place to play. And maybe Paul responded. I don't remember. But all I know is that from the time I stepped up here, I was just blown away by the setting. I mean, this is just an incredible place. Golf course is, uh, is so much fun to play. And, and I think that just... More than anything else, it's just the atmosphere, the people, everything about coming here and playing is why I love it the most. I mean, you know, golf courses are golf courses, but it's the experiences you have, not only with the golf courses, but the people and things like that, that truly make it memorable for me. And I just know that from day one, Paul and his uh, and everybody here at Arglass made me feel very welcome. And I just, you can't, you can't replace that with anything. So I, I look at this and... I'm in awe. I'm in awe of its beauty. How do you describe that hospitality that you would get here compared to other places? Is there a different vibe or? Yeah, there's just, I think that just, they, they make you feel very welcome, but they also, it, it's almost like they're family right away because they're going to, you know, they love to have you here, but they're also going to give you, you know, a little bit of a grief. You know, stick, you know, whatever you want to call it here. But, you know, the humor, the the camaraderie, you know, hanging out with them over a couple of pints and just chatting back and forth. And I think just the whole experience is, is was fantastic from day one. And that's truly what makes golf memorable to me uh, these days so important because, you know, I can go play. You know, and I I have played. I shouldn't say I can go, but I have played some of the, you know, world's top rate golf courses. But, you know. Not too often do you get to come to a golf course, and not only does it have beauty and character, and you know it's it's not easy, but you get done with it, and you can hang out and just soak it all in, and really enjoy everything you just did for the last four hours, four and a half hours. And this place is certainly one of them. 
you've now been made an honorary member, so you can come back and play any time you like. You've been here a few times already. I, I have, yeah. This is uh, first time since playing it, though, since 2015, and I can't wait to get out there tomorrow um, and probably on Tuesday morning again before we get out of here. But, yeah, I just it's just one of these places that, you know, depending on the weather, you're not going to have two days the same. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to bring all sorts of uh, different shots to it, and and play it so many different ways. And that's also the beauty of Lynx Golf. But this golf course, where you can see the the water on every hole, I think it's it kind of gives a little bit added something to it. It it's just got that that factor with it. It's just it not very long, but it it's gonna challenge you. You mentioned there that you hadn't played since 2015. Here was that the first year you hooked up with Sky, and how did that come about? Yeah, first year I worked for Sky full time. I was in 2012 when I was over playing uh, full time. I approached them about maybe doing some work towards the end of the year because I wasn't playing very well, and I knew that my my days of playing were limited, and I didn't have enough experience for them. And so they, you know, they said, you know, if you get some more experience, we'd love to have you back. Things like that. And then so I went uh, back home, and um, I think 2013. Uh, caught a break with the Golf Channel, worked for them for a couple of years, and then from that experience, then uh, Sky Sports uh, approached me at the end of 2014, asking if I was interested in coming over and working for them, just because they had a new presence on the PGA Tour, and I said absolutely. So um, from day one, it's been it's been a lot of fun. It's it's something that I truly look forward to doing every day. Royal County, I must have been one of your relatively first uh, sort of commentating that. It was the first year of doing it, yes, for for Sky, and I remember that vividly because the weather was just not like this, where it's uh, nice and sunny and beautiful. It was anything uh, of the sorts. In fact, I remember mentioning to Paul McGinley on Sunday, asking him, uh, you know, in the U.S., people in the winter months, they're called snowbirds. They can go from north down to the south, Arizona, Florida, you know, places like that where it's nice and warm. And I asked Paul where. Uh, everybody in Ireland goes in May when it's absolutely freezing cold outside because I'd never been that cold on a golf course in my life by a long shot. It was quite miserable, but it was it was pretty funny. I, I must say I had never experienced anything like that. No, I mean squally showers come in over the weekend and the temperature would drop by about seven degrees yeah. straight away. It was awful. But a lot of a lot of players complained that year about the weather. I think this year we're we're due half decent weather at Ballyliffin next week. Yeah, it's supposed to be really good next week. It's supposed to be. Um, you know, dry, if nothing else. I don't think it's supposed to get really warm, uh, but that's got to be because of the location of it. But uh, I got to say, it's, you know, anytime you play Lynx golf courses and it gets firm and fast like it's supposed to be next week, that's what you want. I mean, you want you want it to run out. And, you know, last year, you know, guys were having the, the opportunity to just kind of throw darts in there. You know, wind didn't materialize as much. And the rains, even though it made it a little bit tougher, they still were able to just kind of hit the golf ball and, pretty much where it pitched it stayed so uh, not true links golf but if it blows a little bit this week uh, the conditions are already firm and fast because of the drought you guys are in then i think it's gonna i think it's gonna test uh, the greatest players and kind of see what uh, you're made of you fit it in seamlessly into the sky team you, you, you seem to have a great camaraderie with a lot of the guys especially you you and i have a uh, we got a good banter going back and forth and, and, and the stuff you see on twitter it's it's all in good jest there's no doubt about it um you know he's he's taught me so much as everybody at Sky has, but you know you and I have have kind of bonded a little bit um, through it all. But the, the one thing about Sky is that we're all ex players. We know how hard the game is, and we we work as a team. We're not trying to to one up each other in any sense, um, you know, in commentary because that's just that's not how it's done. We have a great team. We have a great group of guys that understand the game, that love the game, have played the game at the highest levels and been successful at the highest levels. And now we're doing something that is uh, nearly as good. So uh, the one thing about Sky, I got to say, is that from day one, I've I've felt welcome. I've felt like I'm, you know, one of the guys. And they've uh, they've they've brought me in with open arms. It's been a lot of fun, and I hope to keep that relationship for as long as my broadcasting days go. Enjoy your ride here tomorrow, and thank you for your time, sir. Thanks, appreciate Cheers, it. thank you. Andrew Morris Golf now offers 12 months interest-free credit on everything bought online and in-store. New golf clubs or that electric trolley you've been dreaming of for as little as £30 per month. Drive the extra mile to drive away happy. Check out andrewmorrisgolf.com for full terms and conditions. Andrew Morris Golf on the web and at Lagonview Golf Centre Lambeg. 
So another PGA News, Damien Mooney, Joe Dill and Colin Moriarty will represent the PGA of Ireland at the International Team Championship in Greece next week. Ireland won this event last year by, by 16 shots. And finally, the Emirates Australian Open gets underway today, Thursday. Uh, there's three places up for grab in next year's Open Championship at Royal Port Rush. The leading three players inside the top ten at the end of the tournament uh, will have to start the search for accommodation. Michael Hoy signed off on his 16th year as a touring professional at the recent Challenge Tour Grand Final in UAE. A share of 22nd place saw him finish the season 25th on the Challenge Tour, uh, but he opted not to make a bid for a full tour card at Q School this year. Why? Michael Hoy joins us on the phone. So Michael, let's go straight to the question, the hard question. Why did you decide to opt out of Q School? Well, there's about five factors in that. If you're experienced like I am, um, number one, I've been away for over five weeks. Done a links China, China, stayed out in the UAE, so I was kind of wasn't just needed to get home after five weeks. Number two, the category I have is just behind qualifying school anyway. Uh, it's not much difference at all, only a few spots, which a lot of people don't understand. Because if you're top 30 challenger, you go in just behind qualifying school. Number three is 5,000 euro, which didn't really have spare because 2,000 entry fee, roughly 2,000 for a caddy, and then flights and hotels and stuff like that. So it's pretty expensive. And then also number four is this. Uh, there was about 12 medicals. There's about 12 medicals for next year, which a lot of people don't know, but there's guys like Graham Storm, Victor Dubois, on Burn Cheeseburger. Burn Cheeseburger, but that's his nickname. Uh, Jaco Van Zyl. Carlberg, Broberg, Edberg. Uh, you've seen Lauren and Chris Paisley are also playing in Europe next year. So you, you factor up all those things, and I just don't think the categories are going to go down. It's not going to go as far as last year. A lot of tournaments won't even go near qualifying school. The harsh reality is that um, I just didn't think it was quite worth it. And also, sorry, another factor, number five, the golf courses are kind of very straightforward. I needed to be 16 to 17 under to get a, a reasonable card. I just don't think that uh, that suited me. And um, thought PJ Catalonia was when five or six under was was a card that I could have done it. And then I could have done it at Lumine, but I think it was going to be very uh, hard work. So there we go. So basically, as you say, it's very hard to see how it would be worth your while at all. Now, uh, you know, uh, Paul knows a few boys down the Armagh way who could organise an injury if that's what you need to do. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Michael, yeah. when you factored all those things in, in, yeah. into the system, is the system not working, Michael? You sit in the tour committee. Is the whole thing about you know tour school categories? Is it not working? Yeah. It hasn't been working for about eight or nine years. I got a card ten years ago, and then I got into enough tournaments, and it was you felt pressure at qualifying school because um, you knew you were going to get into a lot of tournaments. But as they've increased the number of um, co-sanctioned tournaments with good prize funds, you get 70 spots for Asia, or even 84 spots for Asia, actually. India gets 94 spots for Asia, then and only 60 for Europe. They get 30 more spots, which I never agreed with that at all. How they can get 30 more spots in, in, in a much weaker tour than the European tours? Yeah, yeah the, yeah. the co-sanction events. You're not going to get into enough stuff. It's been incorrect for eight or nine years, but the committee did vote for a point system for next year, which does mean that the smaller events count for a little bit more right. next year. But it's only a little bit more. It is slightly better. But, yeah, I do think it's unfair. The guys who are, have done a nine-day marathon, so it's not six rounds. It's 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 nine days. You, you you fly into Barcelona. You drive down one hour. You play two practice rounds because two different golf courses, six rounds of the tournament. If there's no weather delays, and then you fly home. That's ten days in Spain. It's an awfully long time, and they're not getting rewarded enough for it. Absolutely. Terrible. And if more people weigh up what you've done, Michael, and, and decide that it's really not worth it, how does that look for the yeah, challenge tour? there's a few. Max Oren didn't go. Tom Lewis didn't go. Um, a couple years ago, Tom Lewis didn't go. A lot of guys were at the grand final. A lot of guys were talking about it. Um, they said Max Oren didn't go this year, and somebody else didn't go. 
because they have the category that I have just behind the qualifying school. And so, yeah, there's very not much the tour can do about it really, but just a tough one. And and so that that being the case, and how is it looking for the Challenge Tour going forward? No, well, Challenge Tour top 15 is good because that gets a category yeah. which is above qualifying school. But for qualifying school itself, there's a lot of guys pay the money. You know, you're paying two thousand euro, and they don't know what they're paying for, and that's the that's the you know the tour need the revenue because they make two over two million euros from it. <laughs> but they, you're not getting probably not getting a fair deal. Yeah. Interesting. Well, in, in terms of your season, then Michael, five yeah. top tens, um, you know, a couple of few sixty sixes on the cards, so, uh, a few, few missed cuts as well. Um, how would you rate your season? Say, say you were doing a McElroy and giving yourself a grade at school. How would you have graded this year? Uh-huh. Yeah, um, sort of B. Mm. Right. It was definitely more consistent, but um, I'm starting to putt really good the last few months, so that's really. Very encouraging. Just didn't get enough top. Um, just needed to be a little bit sharper, but not far away. Definitely um, quite close, but the money difference, like I was fifth in Kazakhstan. And if you finish fifth compared to 17th, you know, it's like 11,000 euros difference, yep. which is mu- such a massive difference. So you got to be in the top fives. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sp- speaking of the dose side of things, you were very candid with us. Was it last year, or the year before, just about how the mathematics of the whole thing is very important? How did it, how did you, how did it go for you this year? Then did you, did you make a bit of money this year, or or how's it looking? No, not, not really much at all. No. Um, I took the tally, so I was about forty over forty thousand euros expenses, <laughs> and with seventy three thousand euro prize money, but there's a lot of withholding tax. Um, on that, you know, you don't get, you don't sniff getting seventy three thousand. You got to pay your caddy seven yeah. percent of prize money as well. So, no, probably sort of, I mean, maybe made a fraction, but but not enough. <laughs> um, I didn't have the Irish Open. You know, if you come thirtieth in an Irish Open, it pays for yeah. some of your expenses, and didn't have that. But um, yeah, no, it's it's just difficult because the scoring oh, yeah. so so good. You know, in Challenge Tour. But but you still you're you're still going to continue, Michael. There's no sign of you uh, hanging up the bat yet. What are your plans yeah. for for next season? Yeah, no, like because of the category I have, <clears throat> um, I've I've just been through the schedule. I could play 15 European tournaments. Very good. Pretty much guaranteed, guaranteed 15 or 14. Like, but no less than sort of 14 next year. But but I'm gonna pick carefully and try and play the good challenge tour events, course that I know, and European tour events. Try and make a bit of money. The European Tour events, and then ultimately try and um, yeah. well, you have to win one of them or your top 15 challenge tour. So at least I've got winter golf. I just booked booked Aussie PGA and South African Open there because yeah. I get into both of those. Brilliant. And then some winter golf, which is which is great. Yeah, and Michael, will you have a go for the Open Championship this year? Well, yes, in three weeks' time, I'll have a go <laughs> because. It is a qualifier, the SA Open. So, um, there, yeah, I mean, if a top five are there, although 240 other people want a top five as well, because it's two courses and there's 240 guys are playing. So it's a good tournament. So that is another opportunity. Um, I don't know if we're having, are we having qualifiers in, in Ireland or are they all just the, the same as last year? I don't know, Michael, yet whether they're going to do regional or local qualifying. I presume they will do because that's their, probably tradition, just that's their tradition. Uh, but yeah, but it's probably just the same courses. Yeah. As last year. So Scotland and England and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah no, I think I'll have a go. I played knots last year. It was a really good course. Good. I don't, get through I, I, it definitely it was a good course I, I'd do it again definitely yeah Brilliant. just before you go last time uh, we were on a course together you were looking for Paul Kelly's golf balls if you remember <laughs> um, <laughs> since then he's been having well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> since then he's been having a bit of difficulty what was what is your moaning about I was moaning Michael uh, like mm-hmm. we were mo- talking about this in the last podcast now we are amateurs, obviously, so we might only pick up a club once every, say, three or four days, if we're lucky during the summer. But we, we would get that feeling sometimes where you pick up the club and the club just feels 
alien in your hand. It was, you were getting it's, this it's as, if, it's as if you've never held a golf club before. So for a pro, when you're out there and you pick up the club one day and things are out of counter mm. slightly, you know, you, you don't know why, but you're just a wee bit off. Is there anything, any drills you do to get that sort of feeling back? Well, that's ideal in China when you've just got sort of food poisoning. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely wonderful situation. Which I've had plenty down the back of the range in Kenya, and you. A little you board of about where, yards. What restaurant to go to? Yeah, <laughs> lovely. Um, yeah, just cut cut two inches off them because they'll fit in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, that's Michael. <laughs> on that note, that's very catty to have a chat with again, Michael, and, uh, and the very best of luck for next season. Thanks, Michael. Good luck to you. No next problem. Time. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. At clubstohire.com, you can take all the hassle out of your golf travel and rent your clubs before you fly. Clubs to Hire offer the very latest sets from just £32 per week, including the brand new M4 clubs from TaylorMade. And Clubs to Hire have just opened three new locations in Australia. That's 26 locations worldwide. So wherever you're traveling to play golf, choose the easy option and hire your clubs at clubstohire.com. Staying with the whole tour school theme, uh, this is on a Thursday. They've just finished tour school over in Spain. And Gavin Moynihan, our old mate Gav, he earned his full tour card today. Yay. He finished with a score of 16 under par. Good just, shooting. Just on there. Cormac Sharp and narrowly missed out. He finished on 15 under. Gutted for him. Absolutely gutted for him. And Robin Dawson was back in 73rd. So listen, congratulations to Gavin. We were trying to get Gavin there to come on this evening, but of course he's probably celebrating. If he is, fair play to him. But we'll definitely get a wee chat with Gavin for next week about what he's done, because that's a great news for him. And do you think by the time this podcast goes live... There may be other news about what happened on the on, at the. I'm sure there's always tales of woe, Morris, from the European tour school. Like poor Tom Murray. Did you hear about Tom Murray? He plays regularly in Challenge Tour. Played over in the NI Open a number of times. He was going great guns after two rounds. Signed for incorrect scorecard, and it wasn't as if it was a mistake. It was just a mistake of where the scores were Cheaper. in the card type thing. Lost out altogether. So there's always sad tales and tales of woe. So I'm sure there'll be some to come. Something will surface. On with the amateur news. Ireland International, Tierney McLaurin, he was tied ninth at the Argentine Stroke Play Championship in Buenos Aires. It was McLaurin's second top ten Argentine, having tied for eighth the previous week at the Copa Juan Carlos Talahide. I'm glad you did that one. The RNA and the USGA will administer a global ranking for golfers with disabilities, which will help to grow participation and competition around the world and to promote inclusivity within the sport. Uh, the World Ranking for Golfers with Disability will launch on the 1st of January and will be administered in tandem with the World Amateur Golf Ranking. The RNA and the USGA will assume responsibility for the ranking following agreement with European Disabled Golf Association, who created the comprehensive and independent ranking for golfers with disability in 2014. And it's that time of the year when clubs and branches get ready for their ADMs and EGMs and whatever. This is where you start to glaze over. But, as always, this is important. <laughs> now, yeah, you say this every year, but this is very important. The Ulster Branch ADM is on November 29th, and one of the big issues up for discussion will be the plans for Ireland's one governing body. So they've been discussing this for a number of years. They've now got the stage where proposals have gone out to all the clubs. So it's, it's going to happen, hopefully. Yes. On January 19th, the GUI and the ALGU will decide their future. Each union will ask their member clubs to vote on the Golf Ireland proposal, which will hopefully bring men's and women's golf under a one brand new organisation for golf. And you can find loads of information about the proposals online at www.golfnet.ie. Now, what's the thinking behind that? Cost? It costs uh, ability to access funds because obviously you're looking to be an equal opportunities organisation now and one where you're not applying to the likes of Sport Ireland or Sport Northern Ireland as two separate bodies be able to do it as one body so it streamlines that it streamlines um, the organisation in terms of people doing two different jobs it streamlines the opposite the, the whole idea of golf being an organisation in Ireland which doesn't adhere to old traditional woes and moors um, where are they having their beatings Port Marnock uh, no <laughs> Saying. Just saying. <laughs> Sorry, get back on to your point. 
<laughs> oh. Under, by the way, under the new proposals, golf clubs will still be allowed to be separate. They'll still be allowed to have women's and men's clubs, but a lot of clubs will obviously amalgamate over the years and will become one one club. They're hoping that basically it'll help stop the decline in the game. Yes. Resources will be able to be, be spread about a bit more often. One of Ireland's leading boy internationals, Mark Parr, will play college golf uh, for Wake Forest next year. Darren Clark spent a bit of time at Wake Forest, as did Webb Simpson. And one other pro golfer you might have heard of, Mr. Arnold Palmer. Yeah, not a bad alumni, isn't it? Not a bad one. Well, not a bad one at all. Get the best prices on every round of golf with Hot Deals Tea Times exclusively from Golf Now. Available at more than 1,600 golf clubs throughout the UK and Ireland. Hot Deals save you up to 80% on thousands of tea times daily. Find the flame and save every time you play with Hot Deals only from Golf Now. And that's about it for episode 54. Sorry, yeah. 54, 57. 57, yeah. 57. And just a final call about the Open Championship. As has been well documented, we told everybody, we warned everybody, Championship days are long sold out. There are still a few tickets available for the practice days. And you and me both agree that practice days are sometimes the best days. Yeah. There's not, there's not as many, not as many people there. You can walk along. Yeah. You can see Pros everybody. Are relaxed. You can yeah. get talking to the media yeah. sometimes. So listen, they won't last long. You can imagine that a few people will be get those in a Christmas presents. And Morris, if like you and me, you like a wee bit of the corporate hospitality. Uh, how much are you talking? Well, I, I don't know <laughs> the prices. Four figures. I don't know the prices, but listen, if there's anybody doing corporate hospitality and would like us to come along, a sample. Guests, we'd your, be your finest boy. Yeah, it'd be lovely. <laughs> um, so they've added, they've had to add some new packages at Royal Portrush. There's been that much demand wow. for it. So if you, you're looking some more, that's because you can't get that. tickets. <laughs> probably that's probably why. It's because the tickets. Thinking, how am I going to get there? I need to. I need to go corporate. I need to pay the dough. I wonder can the business afford it? Go to the boss. Listen, I have an idea for ten. I was what? We take, take two or three of our clients to the, the open championship. Oh, great idea! How much <laughs> is it costing? Oh, fifteen hundred pound <laughs> for a table of ten. Anyway, visit theopen.com dot com for all the details. You can get all the corporate details on, and that's where you get your practice tickets. Fair enough. Uh, it's been a busy week show. Now we've had Michael Hoy on. We've had Rich Beam on. It's, yes, sir, uh, it's been good. Next week we are talking to a European Tour referee slash. Tournament Control Director. Director. Uh, Andrew Snoddy is going to come on and tell us about the rules for 2019. Yeah. Now, it's all been sort of talked about, and you have a wee laugh on the golf course now about the new rules. Leave exactly. that flag in, so it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, you could do a Bryson DeChambeau and decide about the coefficient. Which fla- He's already decided to work out which flags have a bit more given them so that you can hit <laughs> the butt at them. <laughs> That's a balloon, by the way. Seriously. So Andrew Snoddy from the European Tour is joining us next time on the podcast to talk all the new rules coming in. He says he needed a bit more time to do his homework. Yeah, he was afraid of us asking him a tough question. <laughs> so if you're playing the Winter League, good on you. 17 points this week. For plenty. With a ding and a double. So, you know. After my, my 39 couple of weeks ago, had a couple of bad rounds, and now I got back out, had a 37 there. Were you playing 18 we holes? We play 18 holes at Royal Armagh still, yeah. Uh, we're only doing now. Yeah. Uh, so if you're playing the Winter League, I uh, hope you're still having fun. The weather hasn't been that bad now so far. So far. Yeah. And if you're playing, as I say, uh, take care. We'll talk to you in about two weeks' time. We're going to do our, probably a big wrap-up of of the season. We'll look at how everybody's done this. Obviously, the week, this weekend's the final event, more or less. So Everybody. apart from the silly wraparound stuff. Yeah. And we'll see where everyone's at after 2018. Uh, look after yourselves. Don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and um, <clears throat> and what else? Instagram. So yeah, it's, I've never uh, been on our Instagram. What's it? Lots of pictures of n- golf courses. No, I think there's about five, but you know, <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Uh, NI Golf Podcast on all of those platforms, and from myself and himself, we'll see Cheerio. you next time. All right, don't touch me. Sea woo, shaking that ass, shaking that.